Hi, this is Kathleen with Calvin Tag and Title Service, located at 7000 Bel Air Road, Baltimore, Maryland. Zip code is 21206. Our phone number is 410-668-6000. Website is www.calventagtitle.com. Hours are Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday is 12 to 6 or 12 to 7, depending on the, um, just check uh, Google. Google will tell you our hours, okay? Um, today, I want to talk about getting a lien release when you can't find the seller that sold you the vehicle. Getting a lien release. How do you go about doing that? What to do is, on the front of the title, do I have a vehicle with a lien release, um, with a lien information? Uh, I don't have any to show you now. I have to, like, dig, but <coughs> I'll tell you how to... Uh, know if there's a lien on a vehicle. Um, if it's a Maryland title, okay, on the left hand side of it, you know, like probably 75% of the title, like way down, or maybe three quarter from the uh, from the bottom to your left of the title, you're going to see an institution name. You see, like Bank of America, West Lake, or you could say West Fargo. Or any credit union or whatever the information of the lien holder is so what to do when you buy a vehicle and you have searched everywhere you know of the phone number of the seller that sold you the vehicle and you can't seem to find it the best thing to do is to contact Google online Google the name of that uh, company online Put the complete information and you should be able to get their phone number if you're not able to get their phone number the advice to give you is to write them a letter first write them a letter make a copy don't send them the original yeah they don't need the original title all you have to do is uh, make sure you complete the back of the title make sure your name is there your address the odometer all the information and make sure the seller's uh, signature is on it if the seller did not sign it then it's invalid but make sure the seller signed the title. Yeah, if the seller signed the title, then you should be able to, you know, call the lender and the lender should be able to send you the lien information by mail or they will fax it to you. So, like I said, I just had one like a few minutes ago whereby I tried Googling, I couldn't find the number, the real number of that location. And then when I called the main one, it was asking me all kinds of questions that didn't relate to um, a loan, you know, like loan, you know, like if there's a lien on a vehicle or auto loan. I pressed auto loan and it was asking me if I was in the military or not, you know. So when I, they didn't find me being in the military or with any, like, my family member being in the military, they hung up on me. So in a case like that, what you do is you write them on that address, um, on, the, on the title, you see the address, you write to them. With make sure you complete the back of the title where it says the uh, purchaser's name, address, odometer, and then sign and then print your name. Already, the seller has already must ha might have signed the title and must have uh, also printed his or her name on the title. So, if you have that in place, you make a copy of your driver's license. If the address on your license is not your uh recent address you write your you know like write it make a copy of, as you make a copy of your license you write it say current address you let them know where your current address is and then once you mail it to them someone will contact you you put a phone number there for them to contact you and then you wait if someone contacts you fine if they don't contact you then you have to go to the motor vehicle of that title if the title is maryland you go to mva and explain your situation sometimes the bank might not be in business that's why like when people pay off we kind of encourage you to call the lien holder and get the lien release immediately some people will get the lien release uh, from the lender but they will not attach the lien holder with the title some people will put the title somewhere else and they put the lien hold uh, lien release somewhere else 
So that's what happens when they sell the title, when they sell the vehicle, they forget to give the person, you know, the lien release. And sometimes the person might still be paying on the vehicle and then they sell the car to you. So if they sell that car to you, you're liable. You're liable to pay the balance. You know, that, that's the only way you'll be able to get the vehicle in your name. I don't know who knows how much the person is owing. Whatever they are standing is, if you want to get the lien release, then you have to pay that lien, whatever is left, and then you get the vehicle registered. That's if he, what's going through all that. But sometimes I believe most normal people would uh, uh, pay off on the vehicle and then they sell the, they turn around and sell the vehicle. So when they're selling the vehicle, some of them will forget there's a lien on a lien release or a lien on the title and they might forget to give you the lien release. Here in the state of Maryland, we have our title is blue in color. And then with a little pink, you know, where we have the VIN numbers and everything, you see a little pink on it. And then on the top of it, it will say uh, uh, certificate of, uh, Mer what does it say? Maryland, oh, let me see. Maryland certificate of title. I believe that's what it will say. Let me see if I have any Mer recent Maryland uh, title to give you an idea. Yeah, it will say Maryland. Okay, this is another state. Okay. Mm. It should, it should say Mer certificate. Okay, I see one here. Okay, yes. Maryland title will say. Okay, it will say Maryland certificate of title. This is a copy, you know, photocopy of a Maryland title. Usually it's all blue. And then here will be pink. It's like blue and pink. And then the lien release, the lien release, they have, in Mary, state of Maryland, it's all pink. And it will say on here, this is not a title. Then you see the lender's information, like I was telling you, when there's a lien on a title, on a Maryland title, you see the lender's information right here. You see Bank of America, Westlake, whatever the institution name is, that's where the lien holder will be. So if someone is presenting you a title to register the vehicle and you see an institution name uh, down here, all you do is ask for the lien release. So the kind of lien release they will give you is either all pink here in the state of Maryland. It could be all pink. If it's not all pink, yeah, all pink, you will have the lender's information here. And then on the side of it, the lender will sign and then put the date it was released and then the title of whoever signed that title. Um, it could also be a letterhead. You know, it will have like, it's gonna, it will be like a plain sheet of paper and you have the company name. Make sure it's the same name as on the title. Sometimes they sell the lien. That's another story, you know, but... Make sure whoever is releasing that lien, because sometimes you might have a waste leg uh, when you bought the vehicle and then West Fargo is releasing the lien. So when they're doing that kind of uh, switch like that, you make sure all the VIN number is correct, everything on that uh, uh, information, on the letterhead they're giving you. They're going to put their name, the address of the business, the phone number, and then the customer's information is going to be the same name as on the title is going to be on here. And then the signature of whoever is releasing that lien, the date the lien was paid off. And then the person will sign, whoever is releasing that lien will sign, put their title, date the title, and then put a notary seal on it. So when that is what is given to you, and it has a different name. As for me, if I have a different lien release, like a, a different lien release uh, that is, on, is different from the lien holder on the title, I'm going to make a call. I will not just register the vehicle. I make sure I make a call to make sure that the lien was sold. I will ask them who sold that lien. You know, make sure it reflects with my paperwork. I will ask them, can you tell me the lien holder on the, the initial lien holder? If they tell me it's a... Uh, West Fargo, say for instance, it was West Fargo on the title. Then I'll say, okay, no, it might say West Lake, and then West Fargo is releasing it. So they have to send me like an email just to protect me. I say, okay, if you're claiming that this lien has been released and it's this company that released this lien, I will have you like email me. I will suggest that they email me 
send me an email, give them my email address. Some of them will not even want to talk to you. Some of them will say, no, you have to bring the account holder. I'm not authorized to speak to a third party vendor or whatever. Sometimes I'm like really nice to them and I'll tell them, look, this is a yes or no situation. I don't need for you to divulge any information. If you want me, you're free to ask me the information on the title and I'll give you. So some of them will feel comfortable like talking to me. So in that case, if they're telling me where I'm going to worry is if the vehicle is newer, like 2017, 2000, say like seven years or newer, I'll make sure that they send me an email. If the vehicle is older, you know, it's so, it's still, you still got to verify too, you know, to make sure. But I won't, you know, for in short, being a different lien holder, you have to make a call to make sure that what you have is the same lien release that is in the system with motor vehicle. So that's what I would do. Yeah, the chances of the lien release being different is there. It's not fake. Some people get it and they start panicking. No. Call them, make sure, yes, they release the lien. They will tell you the company, the lien was sold to them, and now the person paid off, and then we release the lien. Yeah, that's how you go about it. And then, um, um, like I said, you know, you write to the company, make sure you complete the back of the title. If the name on the title is different from your license, they're not going to respond to you. So make sure you're the rightful owner. Of that vehicle that you purchase it from the seller and your information is on the back of it how much you paid the seller signature is on it then the bank will the lender will take the information they'll match it with what they have in the database and then they will mail that link release to you sometimes i yeah, will advise you to put your phone number there so that they will call you to verify the information to make sure everything is good before they mail it to you so they will do that but whereby the person is owing the company will tell you we cannot send a lien release to you because the person is still owed, owing an outstanding balance. This is a so and so outstanding balance. If you want to pay off the lien and get the lien release, uh, pay off the loan and get the lien release, yes, the, you have that option to do so. If not, that vehicle is as good as nothing or as good as junk because nobody is going to register that vehicle as long as that lien is on the uh, on the title. Sometimes we also have the option whereby when we Google, we get the phone number and then when we call, some of them will not even want to divulge any information. Oh, we're sorry, we cannot talk to you. You're not the actual customer we need for you. So what I normally do is I'll tell them, look, I'm a tag and title agent. A customer came in here with this um, uh, lien release, uh, with this title, and I see that you are the lien holder on this title. So all I need for you to do is to let me know if the lien has been paid off or not. And if so, can you fax me the lien release? Some of them will go ahead and, you know, they'll tell me, okay, fax the customer's information. Let him make a copy of the uh, title front and back. Like I said, make sure your information is completed on the back of it. You make a copy of your license. Your driver's license, make sure the driver's license is valid. And then I'll fax it to the lender. And when the lender verifies all the information, the lender will fax me the lien release. They cannot uh, email that lien release to you. You can never get a lien release. If they email it to you, you cannot use it. It's not authentic. It has to be faxed or mailed to you. You must have the original with the seal on it. But if it's fax, yeah, we have the date, the number, everything, so it can be traced because all the information is going to be on the fax, uh, on the fax receipt. So that's all you go about it. Uh, like I said, it, whereby you cannot uh, locate the lien holder because sometimes they go out of business and you, people are running hectares scatter on how to get the lien uh, released. Sometimes the lien might be, um, probably must have been sold to another company or maybe they have like a bond. You have to contact that state title. If it's Maryland, you go to motor vehicle. Sometimes when a business is closed down, they have like bond whereby people, you know, people who are, or, uh, who uh, maybe had like lien on the, on, uh, okay, how do I put it? Okay, they have like a bond whereby people who were owing the company, you know, will... Uh, allow them to, I think they'll pay the loan company off and then they'll be able to get the lien released. But you have to go to motor vehicle for that, if that's your case. So, where you have the, if you're able to contact the lien holder, 
yes, we can, uh, the lien holder, if they verify your information, that uh, the right person sold you the vehicle and the signature matches is what they have in the uh, database, they will send the lien release to, to a tag and title agent. They will fax it. They will ask you, do you have a fax number? They fax it to you, and if you don't have a fax number, they will mail it. You receive it in the mail. And when you receive it in the mail, it has to be the original. The seal has to be there, authentic. You cannot send me a photocopy. It has to be the original. But if they're faxing it, whatever is on it, I believe the seal is going to be there on it. Yeah, it will show when I make it, when I print it out. So with that, we can register the vehicle. So this is all about... Uh, uh, this is all about um, contacting the lien holder uh, to uh, contact the lien holder to release the lien release on a vehicle if you cannot find the seller. So if you have any questions, please give me a call at 410-668-6000. If you cannot contact the seller, you contact the um, if you cannot contact the seller. Google their address. Make sure they are even open before they're still in business before you even send that email. I mean, send the mail. Because if you send the mail and they're no longer in business, it's of no use to you. So if it's a Virginia title, you contact their DMV over there and explain the situation. You write to your call, talk to them on the phone. I believe they will tell you the steps on how to go about getting the lien release. And sometimes they do fast the lien release to MVA. When a vehicle is paid off, they will, some of them will, do, MVA can locate that electronically. MVA will just put your VIN number and then if they see the lien release, MVA will register the vehicle. But if you come in to me and you don't physically have the lien release, I cannot register the vehicle. You have to go to motor vehicle. If you can't locate the person and you, you're not able to locate the, the company, because sometimes the, some people close down and you probably, you Google online, you're not able to find out who they, who bought the company. Because some of them, when they're going out of business, they'll sell the loan. They'll sell all the loans, you know, to a company. And the company will buy it. And then they'll collect the payments. And when, they, when they're buying, when they're selling that company, also remember, they will write to the new customers and let them know that the lien holder has changed. The company will definitely write to you. They write to you, tell you, um, the company has, uh, you know, that they have bought the company. This is going to be your new account number. This is um, where you'll be mailing your loan, uh, your monthly payments. And um, if the terms change, because some of them might increase the, rent, the, the percentage, you know, check the, the how do I put it, the terms, because the terms might not be the same as the previous uh, previous uh, lender. So make sure you read all the fine print, and then once they, they send that letter to you, then you'll be making your payments there. And once you pay off, then they will give you a lien release. So in that case, you see, the lien holder is no longer the initial lien holder. I mean, the lien release is not the, yeah, the lien release is not matching up with the initial uh, lien holder. So. That's what happens, you know, when the company is going bankrupt or they're closing down, they sell the loans, you know, to another company and your payments and everything will change. They will update you, give you all the information that you need to make the payment to so-and-so company. So when you pay off, you see the lien holder will be reading a different company name. So that's okay. If they send it to us, the seal is there, everything is authentic. Even uh, with the seal and everything being on there, I still make a call. I say, look, it's either you're going to tell me yes or no. I have a lien release here that is stating your company. Did so-and-so company sell the lien to you? Some of them will say yes. Some of them will say, I cannot give you any information. I say, please, I'm here to register the vehicle. I don't want to. I want to make sure this lien has been satisfied before I, I register it. Because if it's not satisfied and... Probably someone presented you a fake uh, lien release and you registered that vehicle. That's the problem right there. So any lien release you're not comfortable with, make sure you place a call. Call the lien holder. Ask them, is this you? I have this re lien release for so-and-so vehicle. I'm a tag and title agent. I'm trying to register this vehicle. 
I'm trying to protect your lean if there's a lean on it and to make sure that the lean release I have here is authentic. Some of them will say, yes, Miss Liva, go ahead. Yeah, the person has paid off. I'll ask them one month and I'll verify the information. As long as it matches with the lean release given to me, I proceed to the registration. So make sure any lean release you see, you make a call. Because there was one that came to me on a weekend because some of them will come to you when all the offices are closed and they're thinking maybe you're going to be in a rush to register the vehicle. No. If I see the lean release, it doesn't look authentic, I say, sir, can I make a copy of it and I get back to you tomorrow and let you know if I can register this vehicle. So what I would do, I'll make a copy of the title and the lean release, I'll call the company the next day, the next business day. Then they will verify the information. As long as they verify the information, I'll proceed to the registration. There was one that was uh, brought to me. I looked at it. My spirit just went. I felt something like, okay, there was something I didn't feel comfortable when I got the lean release. So I said, sir, you see, offices are closed now. Give me a copy of it. Let me call tomorrow. Tomorrow is a business day. Let me call tomorrow. And then as the guy left, you know, like how you have the put a number on the on the lean release. So I called the number and they asked for the account number. I was putting the account number on the on uh, on the lean release. And as I put, I think it had like many numbers. As soon as I put like let's say for instance eight digits, he said this account number is wrong. I said, oh, that's a red flag. I didn't even have to make a call. I just called the guy the next day. I said, sir, come and take your. I said, sorry, I cannot register the vehicle. I said, I was not able to verify this lean release. I'm sorry, I cannot register it. So don't be in a rush to register a car when there's a lien on it. Make sure you verify every lien release is not authentic. So you need to do your own investigation. Find out whether it's coming from the right source. Otherwise, you could register a vehicle that's got a lien and you'll be in trouble. So that's all I have to say about this video. So if you have any questions, please give me a call at 410 six six eight six thousand thank you